Okay, so we want to take a look at a real method, right? What are people really doing with the purge and trap system? And what are the things that we can maybe take a look at? Well, what you're going to find in this module folder is going to be another document. And this document is not as long as the instruction manuals, but it's still 47 pages long. And this document is going to concern method 524.2. This method 524.2 is a method that would allow us to extract volatile organics out of a sample and inject them onto a GCMS system with a capillary column. This printout we also have in our laboratory. And if you want a hard copy to kind of flip through the actual method and take a look at, we're more than welcome to let you borrow one or we're more than welcome to let you look at one uh, in the laboratory. Uh, now, we're going to be kind of doing something similar to this in the lab when we use our purge and trap system, but it won't be this robust uh, or complicated. So here we're seeing that this method 524.2 uh, looks like it was done basically in the mid-90s. Uh, maybe there's a different version out there that's been updated that's a little bit better. This is just the very first one that I pulled up. So even if it has been updated, it's not going to change that much. It says scope and application. This is a general purpose method for the identification and measurement of purgeable VOCs. And you can use this with water, groundwater, and drinking water. The method is applicable to a wide range of organics, including the four trihalomethane disinfection byproducts. That is abbreviated as THM. All right, so... Let's kind of stop for a second and let's go back to this note side and I'm going to clear out and we're going to talk about THM. THM, methane, right? All right, so methane is a carbon with four hydrogens. One, two, three, and four. Uh, the H stands for halogen and we have a halogen family and that's fluoride chloride bromide iodide those are the most common so the t is tri so if i get rid of three of these hydrogens leave one and i replace those with maybe chlorine what I have now is chloroform. There's actually four THMs that try to get detected all the time. The reason is that these THMs are disinfection byproducts. A lot of times a public water supply company would put disinfection products into your water supply, kills out everything that's there, but in the meantime, it's generating these side products, and these side products are THMs. And chloroform is going to be one of those THMs. You want to measure those, and you want to keep track of those, and they should be reporting those on a regular basis with a water company or getting them tested at least. So what you're going to find is those THMs are going to be included through this list. Uh, we'll talk about more in the actual lab itself when we actually do the THM lab, uh, but we're by no means going to be looking at all of these all the way down through here, right? Uh, but, you know, I'm seeing a lot of things here that maybe we've looked at before. Acetone is here, uh, benzene, bromobenzene, bromoform, chloroform, chlorobenzene, uh, all of these seem like common organic chemicals that we have on hand at all points in time. Here's a 121314-dichlorobenzene, uh, trichlorodifluoromethane. I'm seeing a lot of halogenated products all the way down through here, right? Diethyl ether, which is also known just as ether. Uh, ethyl benzene, methyl iodide. Uh, all of these naphthalene, styrene, uh, tri or tetrachloroethanes, tetrahydrofuran, toluene, all of these are very organic y. And these organic compounds are volatile. They can be bubbled out of a water supply very easily. And we can measure these using a GCMS system. 
So a lot of these down through here should not really be present in a water supply in very large levels. So PPB levels is really what we're after here. And that's something much smaller than what we've been accustomed to throughout the program so far. As I scroll on through, it's going to kind of tell me the summary here, right? Uh, the VOCs with low water solubility are extracted or purged from the sample. And you're going to do that by bubbling an inert gas through the aqueous sample. Uh, the purged components are trapped. And that trap is basically going to be heated and then desorbed. And it goes to the GCMS system. And then it tells you a little bit about the GCMS system and what kind of column it should have. It goes through and talks about all of the different parameters that should be built into the quality control aspect of the lab. So blanks and standards and calibration curves, um, duplicates, everything that you've learned about in the 115 class or quality control course is basically appearing all the way back in this method if you've taken that already. Interferences, again, anything that is going to cause me some problems, they're going to kind of let you know what those are up front and center, so that way you can expect them if they're going to happen. Uh, any safety that comes along with it, these are organics and they are carcinogenic, so they're letting you know, listen, if they're there and you're using standards, you need to handle them accordingly. The equipment and supplies, here we go, purge and trap system. It consists of three separate pieces, the purge, the trap, and the desorber. Gives me a little idea about the purge and trap system itself. Uh, a smaller 5 mil purging device is recommended if you have the adequate sensitivity to obtain the method detection limit. The trap gives you an idea of what should be on the inside, our Teledon Tecmar is able to do all of those settings. Uh, but notice they put some method parameters in here. Before initial use, the trap should be conditioned overnight at 180 by back flushing with an inert gas flow of 20 mils a minute. Vent the trap. Prior to daily use, the trap should be conditioned for 10 minutes at 180 with back flushing. And you can vent them to get rid of all the contamination. So those are the things that we need to be looking for. If we were developing this method for a lab, these are the settings that I would have to kind of filter through, make a note of, and that way they will eventually go into the method parameter settings. The desorber, uh, you have to be able to heat it up to 180. And the polymer section of the trap should not be heated higher than 200, or the trap will decrease. The GCMS system gives me a couple options here. I've got my choice of a couple of different columns that I could choose from. Depending on which column, well, that could depend on what my settings need to be in the method because it looks like they're different lengths, 160 and 130, 175. It also looks like they're different widths. I've got a 530 column and a 320 column and a 750 column here. Just make sure I match those method parameters up with the proper one. A little bit about the MS system. 70 electron volts. I need to scan 35 to 260 AMUs. Two seconds or less. Four bromo fluorobenzene. Could be an internal standard. Or that is a standard that I need to inject to make sure that it can analyze it the proper way. And then it goes through and gives me all the other settings that I need. So all of those tabs that I showed you in the previous video, especially with the purge and trap system that had the purging and the desorption and the heating and the baking, all of those method parameters are in detail in this method. I just have to go through, I have to scan them, I have to find them, and I got to figure out what needs to go in those spots. Everything about sample collection, how to fill the vials up, how to clean the vials, how to store them if I'm not going to use them for that particular day, all of those are located here in the SOP.
And it should be. It should give me details of all of this information. As I scroll through, I'm going to get closer to the actual procedure part. This is where more details are going to come in. Uh, if I go to the second page here, uh, attach the sample syringe to the valve and be sure that the trap is cooler than 25 and then open the sample syringe valve and inject the sample into the purging chamber. Close the valve and start the purging. The purge should last for 11 minutes. All right, that's one setting that the method needed in the purge and trap system. Uh, here is your refrigerated and non-refrigerated unit. It says if I don't need it refrigerated after the 11 minute purge, place the purge and trap system in the desorb mode. Preheat the trap to 180 without flow. And then simultaneously start the flow of the gas at a flow rate that's suitable. It says optimum flow rate is 15 mils a minute for four minutes. Begin the GC temp program and start the data acquisition. So I'm not going into this blinded. This is where all of my settings are going to be. I just need to find them again. As far as the GCMS system goes, uh, there are settings on that as well. And they're giving me those settings. So I need to go into the system, make sure that when I build the method, these are basically met. It looks like uh, column temperature is reduced to 10 degrees and held for 5 minutes and then programmed to 160 degrees at 6 degrees per minute and held until all components have eluded. They give me a couple of different options depending on what I want to do and which one I feel better about. And then finally if I scroll down it's going to give me an idea of um, uh, maybe some information on each one of these compounds that it can measure. Uh, it gives me an idea of retention times or close to that number, depending on which column that I'm using. So notice they all can come out at different points in time. Uh, if I keep going through, uh, I'm then going to get to the end of the document or the SOP, and I'm going to see some uh, kind of common uh, chromatograms and diagrams that's going to be here at the very end. Uh, if I take a look at this thing, uh, this is a uh, going to be a very complicated sample. There's a lot of components, so this is a standard maybe. And each one of these peaks are going to be a component. Uh, what I would like for you to look at, though, is that this thing is not perfect, right? So if I zoom in on this chromatogram, I'm going to see like a little cluster here. That looks like it's got some peak tailing associated with it. This looks like there's some peak splits that are associated with it. Uh, a lot of this I have no control of, but this is as best as it can get, but it's good enough that I can get some data from it. So it's not perfect by all means. No one says that it will be perfect, but it gives you an idea of what you should be expecting uh, off of the instrument when you get to that point in time. Okay, So this is method... 524.2, and again, this is going to be in your folder in Blackboard, and you can review that and answer the questions that you will have uh, in a related assignment. Okay, so with that said, I'll leave you to churn on the purge and trap information. I know I've excited you to the point of no return, and you're all purge and trap experts now. Uh, but this gives you an idea of the purpose and the use of that particular attachment in the GC world.